Good afternoon to all. Uh, today we are presenting, uh, we, are, we will be discussing competitive strategy in times of crisis, uh, which is a very relevant subject in uh, present times. And this particular topic, uh, I have specially taken this topic uh, to discuss uh, the competitive strategy when certain crises like the COVID-19, which is occurring at present, the pandemic which is occurring at present, uh, should be considered for by the business organizations. We have uh, discussed a lot about competitive strategy in different sectors, in different realms, but how it affects and how the organizations, they try to combat a particular kind of crisis, which uh, something which is occurring now. In this case, what we'll do is uh, the modular approach would be like this. And this is a particularly uh, particular uh, section of MS 11 strategic management in block three, where competitive strategies have been discussed. So what I'll do is I'll start discussing with the cost approach and then discuss different types of competitive strategies. And then we will discuss how the organizations they need to develop a specific kind of strategy in a crisis situation like we are facing uh, presently. So what we see is that uh, in the beginning of 2020 January, uh, it brought a kind of new challenges for all the organizations. Though it was slow and it was not very prominent, but slowly uh, the global crisis started uh, coming into picture and the pandemic was declared somewhere in March and the uncertain conditions, they raised a lot of uh, uh, uncertainty and economical economic downfall for the uh, organizations as a whole. So this aspect, this particular aspect has, uh, has been taken into consideration looking at the present situation and present uncertain and critical environment which we and the organizations as a whole they are facing. So now what is the requirement that there should be a paradigm shift in how the organizations they rethink their competitive strategy in certain kinds of crisis. We have seen that there are organizations where we had natural disasters like fire, like, uh, like floods, like hurricanes but then it was localized. So the organizations could deal with that particular kind of situation uh, in a different manner. But in this case, what we are facing in the present times, the situation is completely different. And where overall, globally, the organizations are suffering and they are rethinking how to develop the uh, model for sustaining in this uncertain situation. Now we'll discuss uh, a part, uh, why is there a need for cost? Because everything is related to cost. We've been talking about the economic uh, crisis. We have been talking about the financial crisis. Every, every now and then we are coming up with such kind of issues. So that is why it is very important that we need to think what is the requirement for cost. First thing is, it is very important for a business strategy. It helps in gaining and sustaining the competitive advantage. And most of the strategic decisions, like fixation of competitive prices, provision of after-sales services, quality of products, etc., this depends upon the relative cost level of a business firm or any organization as a whole. Now, why I am discussing this particular aspect, where you'll get to know that what actually happened or what was the concept of competitive strategy and how it can be reformulated looking into the crisis situation. Now, we come to the profitability aspect. Cost is always related to profitability. So, we need to know how to attain the superior profitability. Now, again, the organizations they are facing this very issue because there may be demand but there is no supply because the markets are closed and there are critical situations so how to attain super profitability and this is very very important aspect of a competitive strategy so there can be two ways 
First is locating in an industry where an attractive structure leads to subdued competitors. Now this is a general concept I am discussing. How this concept can be modified in the crisis situation that would be discussed later. So this is just a preface of competitive strategy. So locating in an industry where an attractive structure leads to subdued competition and the second way is by establishing a competitive advantage over the rivals. Now this is a basic concept for the organizations to follow to attain profitability in a particular industry. How can it be done? Now this is very important. When the firm's resources and capabilities are deployed in such a way so that they match the key success factors or the critical success factors within the industry environment, that is how a competitive advantage can be managed. But how? Now let us take, now this is uh, probably the slides are uh, not so visible but uh, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, explain it. Now there are internal sources of competitive advantage and external sources of competitive advantage. Now this is a kind of a value change where you have resources and cap capabilities which lead to competitive advantage which lead to the key success factors. Now this is the basic concept of competitive advantage and how different points can be achieved in a competitive advantage. Now when we discuss cost in different market conditions, we have two market conditions. One is the seller's market and when one is the buyer's market. At present, both the markets are facing problem. The seller's market exists, buyer's market exists, but both cannot reach to each other in different, in a critical situation like COVID-19. So when we talk about the seller's market, here the price of a product is determined by internal cost plus desired profit margin and when we talk about the buyer's market here the profit margin is related to the permissible price which has to be deducted with the internal cost. So this is how the cost in different market conditions prevails. Now when we see the experience curve. This is a very important aspect of a cost and this is a very important aspect related to the competitive strategy. Now if you see on the x-axis you have the cumulative output of the organization and if you see on the y-axis you have a cost per unit output and the curve is dependent on the number of years that is the learning curve. So when we say that as the organizations grow they develop a kind of an experience over the years and their output increases, the cost per unit decreases and the output increases over a certain period of time. So this is known as experience curve. So this is just a broad idea why cost is required in a competitive advantage. Now when we talk about the experience or the learning curve, it is a repetition kind of a thing which is an excellent teacher in itself. The main factor involved here is learning. As more and more of a product is manufactured, individual workers become more skilled and improvements are made in the organization. They learn the evolution process of learning goes with the experience. This results in fall of employee time per unit of production. That means the fast production starts because people are skilled, people become skilled over a period of time and they start learning in that period of time. Now this particular experience curve was designed by Boston Consulting Group in 1970s and this has been one of the major aspects of developing a competitive advantage. Now basically it states that whenever cumulated volume doubles, unit costs fall by a constant amount, usually between 20 to 30 percent. For example, production of a particular item such as aircraft components increased the quantum of time of direct labor, labor component to make each of these successive items decline. So this is what is an experience or a learning curve. Now what are the causes of experience curve effect and what are or what are the cost drivers, how it helps the organization. It helps in the improved productivity of labor, it has it increases the specialization, 
it develops an innovation method in production uh, form, it value engineering and fine tuning takes place, balancing the product line, the methods and system rationalization also takes place. How experience curve is related to competitive strategy? The strategies can be selling the product at most competitive prices, maximizing profits by selling at the highest price the market can afford, selling at a higher price initially but crashing the prices later to keep the competition out. Now this is very important. Now these things which these things only we are going to relate in the later sections. Now competitive strategy, now we come to the concept of competitive strategy. How to achieve a sustainable competitive advantage and why a competitive strategy is required by an organization. We need to formulate a business strategy or a competitive strategy which involves identification of critical success factors in a particular market and thereby managing the business so as to meet the competition in the industry. Now let us take an example of uh, XYZ or XYZ airlines. What are the CSFs to it? Now this is this example is so relevant in today's time. It is low cost, no frills fare, leading to high load factors. These are the critical sector, fa uh, critical success factors of a, of an airlines which has succeeded in the airline industry by developing a competitive advantage. It is low cost, it, it provides a friendly, courteous, cheerful uh, atmosphere to the customers, it has high standards of the teamwork without rigid job demarcations, it has remarkably quick turnaround times giving increased aircraft utilization, it has an egalitarian culture, it has careful screening of recruits at all levels from baggage handling to the air crew. Now these are few of the components which an organization tries to improve upon to develop a competitive advantage in a particular sector. So this, is, this was just an example. Now one can achieve a sustainable competitive advantage by leveraging the resources developing capabilities, competing on cost, differentiating and occupying a niche or a focus factor. Now if you just remember, just, just remember this slide because these are the five important factors which will be covered in the crisis part also and they are the main part for developing competitive advantage or comp developing a kind of competitive strategy in crisis situation. First is how to leverage the resources, how to develop the capabilities, the existing capabilities, how to compete on cost, how to differentiate and how to focus. This is very important. Now when we come to the, uh, for the competitive strategy, uh, how it occurs. Competitive advantage is a result of some form of disturbance. Disturbance can be external or internal. It can be disruption in IT, techno uh, IT industry. Disturbance creating competitive advantage can be internally generated through innovations like new products, new processes and strategic innovations. Now I would like to add one thing here. How to do, how to develop a competitive advantage in crisis situation. In this case, we are talking about distur disruption or disturbance in the internal environment. When we talk about the external environment, the natural disasters like we are facing today, they can also come into picture. Internal environment always leads to new products, always leads to strategic innovations. Even the crisis situation also leads to innovations and also leads to kind of new products which are relevant in present times. Now I can give you an example in this case is masks, the face masks. These are new products and they are kind of a strategic innovation in the term, in terms is why? Because they are highly in demand and they are required. So most of the garment industry, they are moving towards developing face masks 
and they 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 are relating it to the fashion uh, statement as well so i mean this is used as a kind the crisis situation has been used as a kind of generating new product through innovation now how can a firm outperform the other firm this can be done in two ways first is supplying an identical product at a lower cost second is producing a product that is differentiated so that the customer is willing to pay a price premium which exceeds the cost of differentiation and the goal of cost advantage is to be the cost leader in the industry as i was giving you an example of masks in present if you see the indian conditions there are most of the uh, organizations they are providing masks free they are developing the mask they are manufacturing the mask and they are providing it free of cost to the to the uh, the uh, the ngos are providing it to uh, the different sectors of the society but if you see the higher cluster you would find and if you see the advertisements the promotional policies coming you will find that a uh, specific kinds of masks are being developed specific kinds of uh, uh, mask which which goes along with the dress sense which goes along with the fashion con uh, consciousness because this is an essential thing so they are also being developed in a different kind of an industry so that is where the firms can outperform the other firm now once a firm establishes a position of a cost leadership then it can use its cost advantage to undercut the rivals on price the what are the prerequisites of cost leadership first is aggressive construction of efficient scale facilities vigorous pursuit of cost reduction from experience tight cost and overhead controls avoidance of marginal customer accounts and cost minimization now these things they are you being used in the present situation in organizations as of now you would find you you'll come across many articles where the organizations they are trying to develop a kind of cost leaders leadership use, using these factors now ways to achieve differentiation advantage mass market branding uh, quality uh, exclusiveness focus strategy occupying a small niche in market uh, and based on these issues porter then formulated three basic competitive strategies and these strategies are the cost leadership strategy differentiation strategy and focus strategy now if you see the matrix there are different sources of competitive advantage one is cost one is differentiation on the y axis on the x axis you you can see industry wide uh, spread and in the second case you can see the segment wise uh, wide spread so when you talk about industry wide spread it comes to the cost leadership strategy with related to cost and differentiation strategy related to differentiation when you see the segment wise strategy it is the focus strategy because it caters to the niche market that means a specific or localized market which is which is not global in nature so it is it is for a specific uh, it may be global but it is for a specific group of customers so that is a focus strategy so their focus is only on a certain group of customers and it is not a generic in nature or not general in nature when we see the competitive advantage if you see on the y axis we have lower cost and differentiation on the x axis we have broad target and narrow target the competitive sco scope is based on cost leadership differentiation cost focus and focus differentiation if you see this mat matrix you'll see that all the four kind of competitive strategies generic strategies which lead to the competitive advantage are important in present context now this is the basic idea of competitive strategies which we are coming across and this is the general competitive over the years the researchers the experts they have developed these kind of uh, and the organizations have followed this particularly and they have developed this kind of competitive advantage now let us see what is differentiation we'll just discuss this in uh, in in uh, short and then we move on to the 
uh, business ecosystem, which is a very important aspect in discussing the competitive strategy in crisis in today's times. Now, producing goods and services which are considered unique in its industry, uh, that is differentiation, directed to customers who are price insensitive, leads to differential advantage. Extent of differentiation depends on the overall strategy of the firm. Virtually any product can be differentiation, differentiated. Success depends on the firm's commitment towards customers and, the un and understanding the customer needs. Now, if I say, uh, if I take an example of differentiation in the present context, we can see uh, in the present situation, we are visualizing that dealing with the customers has changed in lot many aspects. Now, the contact, the direct contact has reduced to a large extent and the products are being differentiated on that basis. So dealing with the customer needs and commit, uh, commitment towards customers has also changed in different aspects. Types of differentiation. Uh, differentiation can be tangible, intangible. It can be design, image, packaging, brand, style, reputation, quality and preferences. Now this is a broad idea of differentiation and the specific activities which are to be done in differentiation, uniqueness of the product. I gave you an example of mask. It can be a specialized mask like the doctors which they use that is, that is unique for them. It can be a general mask with the general public uses. It can be a fashion mask which exactly solves the same purpose of the general mask but it is a unique product. It is, it may be low cost, it may not be low cost and differentiation occurs due to the value chain in the organization. There are differentiating factors which serve the customers in the best possible way. It simplifies the maintenance procedures and it has single point buying and superior compatibility. The factors for uh, uniqueness in this case are choice of policy, the networks, the timing, the location, the interrelationships, the learning, the integration, the scale and the organizational factors. The details are given in the course material as well. I'm just discussing the broad aspects. Uh, differentiation cost leads to the increased expenditure on training, increased advertising spent to promote the product, cost of hiring skilled workforce, use of expensive material to improve the quality. The advantages related to differentiation strategies, premium price for the firm, increase in number of units sold, increase in brand loyalty and sustaining competitive advantage. The, there are disadvantages related to dis uh, uh, differentiation strategy, that is the uniqueness of the product not valued by buyers, excess amount of differentiation and loss due to differentiation. The segment base and now we, are, we come to the focus strategy, which is segment based and it has a no, narrow competitive sc scope. It involves the selection of a market segment or group of segments in the industry and meeting their needs in the preferred segment better than the other market competitors. It is also known as the niche strategy. Cost focus involves niche low cost strategy and differentiation focus involves the strategy related to differentiation and for a particular segment of or group of segment. Niche is a geographical uniqueness by specialized requirements in using the product or by special product attributes that appeal only to a specific group of people or customers. Now these are the factors which determine the efficiency of focus strategy. They are the market segment large enough to be profitable, market segment has good growth potential, market segment is not significant to the success of major competitors, it has efficient resources and it, it is able to defend against challenges and choice from different segments. The advantages are can defend against competitive forces, can reduce competition, threat from producers can be reduced and bargaining power of powerful customers is reduced. In present case, focus strategy is the main concept which we'll be discussing. Now let us come to the crisis part and then we'll discuss what can be the competitive strategy in crisis situation. 
Now, there was a paper way back uh, published in Harvard's Business uh, Review by uh, James F. Moore and the topic was predators and prey a new ecology of competition way back in 1993 and if you see that paper that article that is still relevant and it is basically most relevant in the present crisis situation. Now, what is a successful business? Let us discuss what is a successful business. Something, some business, some organization which evolves rapidly and which evolves effectively. But then how can a business evolve? The business can evolve through capital, through partners, through suppliers, through customers. And these create a cooperative network which is required in times of crisis. Now, all these four aspects, capital, partners, suppliers and customers, they need to be in cooperation with each other to develop a competitive environment in for the business. Now, let's see what is concept of co-evolution. Now, this, this is taken from these, these concepts or these ideas have been taken from the same paper and these are so relevant that it was very important to discuss this particular concept. Now, the bi biology, if you, if you just see the environment in uh, today's scenario, you'll see that the biological concept of co-evolution is required in present times. That is a systematic concept of strategy. Now, if industry is viewed as a part of business ecosystem, that is more important than being a single industry. Now, this is a concept of co-evolution where industry is not treated as a single industry. It is treated as a part of business ecosystem. Now, as per Moore, there are different stages. There are four stages of business ecosystem. And we will relate these four stages to the adaptive stages or adaptive cycle of evolution. Now, the first stage is the birth, the expansion. Third stage is leadership and fourth stage is self-renewal. Now, these are the four stages which he gave way back in 1993, which are still relevant and which are more important in present context, present crisis situation. Now, we always say there is a S curve for business organization. They start with introduction or the growth phase, then expansion, then, then they have a stable or matured uh, stage and then they, they, they decline and then they come up again. And if they decline and they go to the recession stage and they are not able to come up, the business dies. But then business can always move up as well. Now, this is the adaptive cycle. Now, let us see what is an adaptive cycle. This is the adaptive cycle where the organization adapts, tries to adapt to a present condition. Now, if you take the adaptive cycle in a biological ecosystem, you'll find that in the birth phase, say a patch is open patches there and the forest starts developing. Then it starts expanding, growing and then it starts expanding. Then you'll see small trees or small plants, they are also coming up. Then they are being, uh, they, they grow be beyond that tree. They may go beyond that tree or they coexist with that tree. Now, if the tree is too big, it gives the shed and some uh, some uh, plants may not survive, some plants may survive. Now, this is kind of an adaptive cycle where you have reorganization, you have exploration, you have conservation, you re uh, the, there's a release, the plants die, they turn into manure, then they, they uh, make the land fertile, then they again, they, re they release some kind of, uh, you can say, uh, the the good quality for fertility and then they reorganize and then again the whole cycle starts. Now in this case if you see and if you relate this particular adaptive cycle to the business adaptive cycle you will find that the uh, situation is like it has passion, it has reason, it has power. Now, this was developed way back in 2012, but this adaptive cycle in business is presently very important to develop a competitive strategy. Now, the first part is innovators. 
managers second part is managers and leaders and third part is administrators now if we, we go back to the moore stages the stages given by moore we have birth we have expansion we have leadership we have self renewal now this particular adaptive cycle again gives the same format where the organizations need to be startups Meet, need to act as startups in the present conditions because most of the businesses they are going down they have been closed for about 2 months 3 months in different parts of the uh, globe so how they develop or how they renew themselves that is very important and how they adapt to the present conditions that is very important for the business organization for this they need to have three basic things first is the passion second is the reason for survival and third is developing the power which will be developed over a later stage now i'll give you an example in this case of adaptive cycle of business which i was just uh, which i came across through a video which was uh, which was developed uh, if if you see the present state the restaurant business or the food industry it is facing a high level of crisis now in that case what these uh, what the business organizations the ones who are trying to adapt to this cycle of business what they have doing, done is they either are coming with the online businesses where there is minimal contact with the customers or they are coming uh, to the customers in one to one basis there is an organization there is a restaurant where they make homemade food but there is only one table for one person and the food is supplied through a basket and which is which reduces the contact now in this case the passion for preparing the food the passion for serving the food and there is a reason for doing this kind of business so there are organization which are instead of uh, supplying the uh, the uh, the food in the restaurants they have gone online and they are trying to give with all the hygiene uh, conditions all all the uh, hygienic or sanitized conditions maintained um, in the organization itself they are going for online uh, food deliveries online food deliveries i'm not talking about the food deliveries like uh, pizza or burgers or some some kind of fast foods but they are trying to focus on the health foods also which develops the immunity of an individual so now they are refocusing themselves and they are reinventing themselves so this is adaptive cycle in business and this is what is required for competitive strategy now when we talk about the competitive strategies during uh, crisis the first is adaptability which i was discussing first second thing is putting a stop to pre scheduled online activities providing support to the customers cooperation cooperation within industries as itself passionate about being developing about developing something or innovating authentic and compassionate creating a crisis plan that means recreating a new structure by gathering fragments from the old structure now this is very very important in the present context because old enterprises they break apart when they develop when they grow through the expansion stage and when they come to the leadership stage and they come to the uh, they they not they are not self renewing they become redundant and at the leadership stage itself when the power comes they become so rigid that this rigidity creates problems so most of the organization in the present crisis situation they are facing this kind of situation so the need of the r for developing the competitive strategy which needs to be developed is to follow an adaptive cycle but adaptive cycle has two major traps that is very important one is the failure trap which usually happens by choice and you can see the example of many startup companies which bubbled and then they fell the second uh, the trap is rigidity trap this is the crisis situation and this is the situation which most of the organizations are facing instead of trying to re renew its uh, re renew or restructure themselves they are just stuck with their existing model of operations so this is where the organizations need 
to look into the fact that they need they should move from rigidity to continuous renewal in this crisis situation the organizations they need to restructure themselves they need to be more flexible they need to be more compassionate instead of looking more for profitability situation they need to develop or they need to sustain the present uh, businesses they are having now this is what is all about competitive strategy and uh, there are many articles on the financial crisis the economic crisis where the competitive strategies have been developed but this particular situation which we are facing now is a uh, is something very unique so in this case over the globe throughout the globe the organizations are facing similar kinds of problem so this is where the adaptive cycle comes into picture and the self renewal aspect comes into picture where the organizations need to reorganize try to rebuild and try to see new ways innovate new ways so it's just like being a startup it's just like being being reborn again after declining or after um, uh, being buried into a crisis it is coming back again so it is the birth stage again which we are coming into so this is what is a, a, all about competitive strategy uh, in times of crisis and if you have any questions related to this particular component you can always get back to me through my email id which is available in, on our uh, website www.ignu.ac.in and uh, uh, you can you are always welcome with your questions and with your feedback thank you so much